Hey there, it's Professor S. And in the next five minutes or so, I want to talk to you about a topic that's extremely important when you're looking at chemistry in a biology course. Uh, but before I get into that topic, I actually want to start with just a, thinking back to how I came away from my own chemistry courses and what I've seen in the 20 or so years I've been teaching. A lot of biology students come away from their chemistry courses with the same what I would call a misconception about how chemistry works. And to be very clear here, I'm not dumping on chemistry teachers, chemistry professors, or chemistry as a discipline. Um, I'm not saying they're doing anything wrong. They do wonderful work. What I'm saying is introductory chemistry, whether at the college level or at the high school level, leaves a lot of students with a misconception that hurts them a little bit when they get into more advanced topics, either in organic chemistry within a chemistry curriculum or uh, within biology courses. And that is this basic idea. I came away from my chemistry education, my introductory chemistry education, feeling like if I knew a substance's molecular formula, that I knew that substance, that that's the cornerstone of, of understanding chemistry is the molecular formula. Uh, and in fact, especially in organic chemistry, that's not the case. It's easy to understand how you get to that place if you look at a lot of the focus of introductory chemistry because intro chem is very much focused on inorganic chemistry and it largely deals with very simple substances that can only be put together one way. Like you take those, those atoms that are present, there's only one way to put them together uh, when you deal with simple molecular and ionic compounds. But as soon as carbon gets involved and we start talking about organic molecules, things get far more complicated. And so one of the things you want to understand going into college level biology coursework and, and the role that chemistry plays is to understand that the centerpiece in biology from a chemistry standpoint is organic chemistry. And in organic chemistry, the molecular formula doesn't tell you much by itself at all. Um, Let's go take a look at some molecules and I'll show you what I really mean. So I wanna show you three molecules. They're going to appear on the left side of your screen, right over there, beginning with acetic acid. Second one that's going to appear is called methylformate. And the third one that appears is called glycoaldehyde. Now, when you look at these three molecular diagrams, it should be really clear by looking at the pictures, these are not the same substance. It's not just because I said they have different names, they have physically different structures. They're not the same. But if you look closely, they all have the same molecular formula. They're all three C2H4O2. They all have the same formula, but they don't have the same shapes. And, it, and I gotta be clear, they are three distinctly different substances. These three molecules have totally different chemical properties. They don't have the same boiling point. They don't have the same vaporization point. Uh, and then there are other ways in which they're different from each other. But the bottom line is they all have the same molecular formula, but they're clearly not the same molecule. Knowing a molecule's molecular formula doesn't tell you everything there is to know about the substance. Molecules like these three are called isomers. Isomers are molecules that have the same molecular formula, but different shapes. And this is particularly important in biology because in cells, the molecules conformation, the proper term for molecular shape, molecular conformation determines the molecules function in the cell, not the molecular formula, the conformation determines the function. And so in biology, it's very critical to understand not just what substances are present in molecules, but to have some basic idea of how they're put together and to realize the same parts can be put together in different ways with different properties. In another video, I'll talk about different types of isomers because there's different ways of having the same molecular formula, but different conformation. They're all isomers. Why do you have that? What do you mean, why do I have it? It's my guitar, that's why I have it. I just thought, 
it would be useful in one of these promos for me to bring some music into the, the thing. So, so this time I'm going to play... No, no, no. That's copyright infringement. We could get sued by the artist. Well, look, most of the time these days, the artists don't own their own copyrights. And, and to be really honest with you, um, you, that's your problem more than mine. So I just want to go ahead and play... No, we're not allowed to do that. I don't want to get sued. Fine. Hey, this is Professor S. If you enjoyed that video, here's a couple others you may also enjoy. Don't forget to like and subscribe so you can see everything new as it comes out. And with that said, here we go! Now!